Well, good afternoon and welcome to the March Everyone Has a Voice. Um, we are pleased to have um, our features in the house, um, Tasha J and Marlon Carey. We'll have a small open mic, an intimate open mic, but first of all, we want to thank the Brockton Library and the director, Paul Engel, for giving us this wonderful, wonderful space to uh, raise our voices. Um, and we also want to welcome uh, Brockton Cable Access and the general manager, Mark Lindy, um, who's going to be uh, filming this, and you'll be able to see it on our um, local cable station. Um, so I am going to introduce our fabulous host. Please welcome Allie. Thank you, Philip. My name is Allie Frioso. I'm a local long-term resident of the city of Rockton. And I'm grateful to be here and to bring in a wave of movement of the creative arts in our city, sharing and inspiring. And um, as I co-host today, I'm going to do intervals of haikus. And um, so we're going to vibe, we're going to share this beautiful energy, and we're going to express ourselves in our community. Our voices will be heard in a soaring way, like eagles flying all around. So we're going to start with our open mic poets who have come to share some of their poetry. We're going to begin first with Nancy Brady Cunningham, who's going to come, who's going to read her poetry, as well as share of her book that she has been inspired to share her writings through. Nancy, come up. Oh well, I'm loud. <laughs> it won't matter. Oh, wrong one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Uh, nice to be here today. I'm going to read two poems from my book, Thread of Fire, Poems of Peril, Longing, and Loss. And, uh, but I'm going to read them in slightly larger type for obvious reasons. So the first, we're going to the first day of spring this week. Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh, it seemed like a long winter. Um, so this is a hymn to the earth, hymn to Gaia. Take us in. We've thrown our light about, craving edgelessness in the wider meadow. Take us in, corn husked into forgiven. We dreamt ourselves dwelling inside. Take us in, you breathed us deep as field furrows once pasture full of seed. Take us in. We endured our clipped surface, our ruined faces. We hear your voice and wait. Such things take time. But the prairie train is leaving, and the orchard spills its prophecy from unspooled lower branches, while we pine for you, Gaia, the friend. Take us in. Take us in. And the other is um, the opposite season. This is end of summer going into fall. And this is called Overwinter. 
It's about um, monarch butterflies and their journey to Mexico. Over winter. Don't let me go like a faded meadow tossed to an early snow. And don't let me go like the last monarch drifting southward. And when small clumps of Mexican firs summon orange wings veined in black and edged in white spots, don't let me be one with the quivering clusters beating above the backbone of the Appalachians. Don't let me go. My flagging limbs signal you again while I reach for the trees atop mountain ridges near El Rosario. Your voice dies away crossing the gray breath of my wings, shivering towards sanctuary. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And as she shared her poetry in reference to the seasons, I'm going to go with my first haiku, and it's every spoken word unveils the mass of our city winter, spring, summer, and fall. Now, we're going to blend a little. We're going to go with one of our feature poets, and our feature poet today is Tasha Joseph, which is a Massasoit Community College student, and she's going to share her poetry of her inspired writings. And what I do want to share is that Philippisaurus is um, working throughout the city with students from the Brockton Public Schools, as well as organizations like the Boys and Girls Clubs with youth to, in, um, to work on expressions through writing. And it's very important to support our youths, our tomorrow's future, as in the creative arts, it's very important because when they cannot speak and express themselves, but if they learn how to through poetry, then that's a beautiful entity where they know the power of their voices and their words goes beyond measures. Tasha, please come up. Hello, everyone. Oh, I forgot this was the wrong one. Okay. All right, um, so like she said, I am from Massasoit. Um, I am studying for theater because I want to be a better writer. So <laughs> my first um, poem was something I did for class and it's called Womb Service. You would not believe what I've been through. I went through a process called meiosis a huge cycle just to become me. I could have told them myself. I was only in this for the womb service. Kick, kick, boom, then there's food. Nine months, they say, I'm going to get out when I want. Mom says she carried my weight. Please, you made me go through meiosis. So how rude. Hello, womb service, I'm hungry. Hello, <sighs> guess I gotta do things myself. Kick, kick, uh, uh, no, I think I broke something. <sighs> Doc, oh, it's a baby girl. Hey lady, skip the intros. Womb service stopped working, so feed me or else. <laughs> All right. My next one is Slave to the Brain. I keep running away from something that won't hurt me. I keep wondering how it would be if something didn't shame me. I grew up since then. I still feel the pain. 
I can't really express when, but the fact I didn't stand up for myself drives me insane. There has to be a hurt inside ever since. So I show people something that isn't me. Always have to fight a battle not fit for an army. Because if it was, someone would have saved me. Yet I fought alone. I am so strong in many ways, but this year I felt all my strength go away. I allowed something in depression to overwhelm my brain. I thought that it was okay to be ashamed. I let these people hurt me. In reality, I am the only one to blame. I showed people a different side of me. It numbed my brain to tell people I was okay, knowing I was really going insane. I kept all my hurt heavier than a chain. I kept running away from something that I allowed to hurt me. It was too late to realize that it was all me. I was the one keeping myself from being free. Mm. All right. Never will I ever, never will I ever be anything like you. You have hurt me, but never have I hurt you. And I don't plan to. You used your loud words to hurt me. Foolish me, I allowed you to. I want to show my respect to you. Where does it get me? Because you don't respect me. The respect is all for you. All, never will I ever let you step on my dreams. You crushed them and wanted to hear more from me, it seems. I thought my laughs would heal our cries, but I just realized your laughter were all just lies. And yet, I kept pushing myself in order to try. You belittle me, and that's my fault. I should have just said forget you from the start, but I wanted to love you, but you kept your love in a vault. Never will I ever be thirsty for love. You didn't want to show me any, so don't be sad when I fly high like a dove. Never will I ever let you break my heart. I locked it so you won't tear it apart. And never will I ever allow the, your truth to hurt me again, for the queen always makes the the peasants bow, the end. Um, don't shoot. After all the crazy things in the world, we got to remind ourselves not to shoot. I want to raise a family, to have a loving man and be happy. But does anyone care? I want a life not overwhelmed with fear. What is the price I have to pay? All I can do is wait and pray. Why is life happening this way? We all want love, but we're all too cray. Can anyone hear me? Don't, I don't want to be afraid. Don't want to lie awake, feeling this agony. Do you see where I'm coming from? Do you even know my name? My name is Tasha J. Let me tell you a little bit about me. I am black in America, where people hate my skin. I am told like I am beautiful, yet I am treated like a sin. They say they don't even like me due to my black personality. They don't even know how I behave. That's just the way that I am portrayed. I found love and it's scary. I don't want them to kill him, nor me. I don't want to have an untold story about how they didn't mean to kill me. I say, just please stop. They laugh and look at their watch, crying and begging on my knees as the tick talked, telling them not to take them, take me, because I love my family. I know I have a price to pay. I want my children to live a better life. I have to protect me and mine, even if they take my life. Being black in America, where being brave ain't free. They want to educate me. I read the fine print and there's a fee. 
So where do I go from here? Should I always live in fear? They laugh while I'm still crying. They pull the trigger, now I know I'm dying. Did I die for a cause? I didn't save my life, I saved yours. I want you to live a better life and ha live happily. So please don't cry, I did it for you. Because being black in America is a beautiful plane we have to go through. And then my last one. <laughs> My last one is called My Truth and Love. Josh, you don't mind, I like to interject before you go into okay, the last no problem. Mm -hmm. because I want to reflect on you, okay? okay? And the reason why I say that is one of the things I love to do is I love to inspire, encourage, and motivate our youth that are uprising in creative ways because we do live in a society that's very challenged. Yes, we are diversified. Yes, we have evolved, but yet we still deal with the challenges of racial disparities. And it's very important for one, especially myself as being a woman of color, to encourage another young lady who's aspiring to grow up, who's expressing herself. The city of Brockton is a city that's always being viewed in our media as a city of violence, a city of crime. But today, we ought to be viewed as a city aspiring to build our community through the creative arts. That is my motivation in the city of Brockton. So today, I want to um, just add to Tasha J, who is a poet who didn't always know there was a gift of writing in her. Obviously, we see it's birthed. She's nurturing it. It's growing, developing. When you think of the cycles of human beings, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. But when it comes from the inner being of your soul, in your heart, in the reflections of the thoughts that you have in your head, it comes out and it touches and your voices are heard. And with that, she grew up surrounded by hurt and pain. And as you heard her poetry, it shares, but what you see is her smile. So you cannot see her pain, but you could feel it, that, that she's went through something because she's put it in the words. So, her emotions are channeled by life, and she wrote all about it. So now I'm going to give it back to her, and I want to encourage you, Tasha, because it's beautiful poetry, and you definitely are expressing yourself. So go on, express yourself. My truth and love. I want you to need me. I want you to say you love me. I want you to know that my love is deep, and that my love will always show. I want you to understand that you're the only man I truly know. After God, it is you. After he showed me what love is and feels like, he allowed me to know you. I know we argue so much and we love each other more. The things that I believe were love weren't love at all. You showed me not to take love so easily. I needed to take my time. You became my John Legend and loved all of me. I find it hard to talk to you because letting my feelings out is hard to do. Yet, the way you look at me makes me pour out to you, shows me that you have patience and your love is true. But I find you so peaceful, so calming, so loving, so silly, so funny. Yet, you annoy me. Then again, I annoy you too. To you, I pledge my alliance so that we could stay together. To the people that which we stand, one couple under God who makes us strong for love, for joy, and forever. Thank you. Great. Now we're going to move forward with our next poet. And before we go forward, I have my second haiku. And basically is what it's saying that we, this group here today, are just the beginning of our tomorrow's future of the strength of reviving the creative arts. We are the movement, voices, force of nature. Sun up, sun down, dusk. Now I would like to introduce Craig Fedricks. Hey, great to be back here. Um, haiku about the moon. Look, they're right, it's super bright. You should write a poem. Thank you very much. Um, mud is alive, I can tell by the smell. I just can't tell what it's thinking. Um, down at the beach, 
Look, smell, mud in the shell. Still can't tell what it's thinking. Uh, mud is alive. You can tell by the smell. Um, you just can't tell what it's thinking. Uh, when writing is like fighting wildcats, breathing air, trees, green grass, and mud. When I'm feeding squirrels, I think I know. That's when my poem's a crud. I've been trying not to write about squirrels so much. So more chickadee, 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 dee, dee, and dove sounds. Thank you very much. I'll be back here in June. That first uh, bit is from the poem I'll be doing for the Brain Injury Association, I, where you write. And it's a big change this year. The last three years I've been writing as a squirrel, and this year I write as an owl. So I, you, you, you won't want to miss that. So see you back here in a couple months. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. I so much enjoyed you. Definitely like the articulated ways of expression. Thanks. Yes, and for the great things that you do in regards to the brain surgery. And you know, there are many healing ways needed, whether it's through grief, through medical circumstances, and the creative arts fits everywhere. And that is definitely a very supportive tool for us in humanity, so thank you. Now I'm gonna move forward and um, we have a featured poet. And um, before we close out with our featured <coughs> poet, I'm gonna take an opportunity to call Philip to come up and share a poem of his own <laughs> because he is the one who motivates, who organizes, and gets this poetry series, everyone has a voice together for all of us to come and share the love of poetry. Thank you, Allie. Um, I know this week has been very, uh, the world is in chaos and um, a lot of things can be written. So I thought I would um, kind of lighten it up a little bit. Um, and it is one day closer to spring. So when I had my dog, Lila, she was a beagle, every morning we would take a walk around the block and take in the neighbors and the sights. And um, so this poem um, was written by Lila, my dog. It's called On the Porch. On the porch, old man swings on old maid hammock Spring rain just fallen, air heavy in thought. Brother stood between the pillars, not a word was spoken between them. Of course, he had been dead a few years. It just didn't seem to matter, less beer he had to share. Neighbor kids run back and forth, just daring for some reaction. On the porch, old man sits in rocker, big toe at work, tropical winds blowing from some remote island he read about in some outdated travel magazine, hair tussles on the side. Sister sits beside him, knitting needles flash, sparks sink through cracks. Of course, she had been dead since the summer before. He still turns his head. She knows all his secrets. Next door neighbor slink up way, both get out passenger door, avoiding any reaction. On the porch, old man sits on third step, paint peels, leaving layers of the past. Sun slides down. Best friend stands at gate, Hinges rusted, missing slats, gum and wire keep it up. Yells something about a $20 bet. To this day, still believes Buckner booted ball just so he would lose. Goddamn son of a bitch. Smiles and waves, I 
like you to meet my brother and sister. Of course, he wishes he were dead, but you can't have it all, even on the porch. Screen door opens, silent figure waits, arms fold, she shakes her head, lets out a sigh, corners of her mouth slide upward. 30 years, 30 years on the porch, sometimes it feels like yesterday takes the hand, feels the boy. Tomorrow, tomorrow you can come out and play on the porch. <laughs> Allie, take over. Thank you, Philip. Always have to take an opportunity to call Philip to read his poem. <laughs> so now we have another poet who's come afar to join us to share his writings. And um, he rode a bicycle all the way from Sharon to Brockton just to share his poetry. That's inspiration in itself. And his name is Edward Abrahamson. Ed Edward, please come up. A rumination, is that okay, can you hear me? A rumination on the power of psalms so long endured as palmistry, as poetry, as minds lubricant to states beyond, as lullaby in a mantra of stilted language so oft repeated as to gum up the works. In excess of speech, in over-dignified print and storied song, of cries in ecstasy of love, of bellows to gird loins for battle, a heritage of supine surrender. We are doomed to cope with the twitter and fritter of electronic rejection. Reprodu retribution doesn't kill as many trees as even a minor constipation of pregnant paws on ink and paper. That space between the lines after the ever-present asterisk uh, lays down the law in tiny typeface. Don't get, don't get me started. Let me count the ways. You're already listed and hacked. Terms and conditions apply. This poem is written by Lee Robinson. It was handed out during a uh, workshop in this library maybe 30 or 40 years ago. Somebody helped me out. <laughs> Downstairs, yeah. And it, it really impressed me and I think it may have influenced my poetry over the long, the long term. The Rules of Evidence by Lee Robinson. What you want to say most is inadmissible. Say it anyway. Say it again. What they tell you is irrelevant, can't be denied and will eventually be heard. Every question is a leading question. Ask it anyway. 
then expect what you won't get. There is no such thing as the original, so you'll have to make do with a reasonable facsimile. The history of the world is hearsay. Hear it. The whole truth is unspeakable, and nothing but the truth is a lie. I swear this. My oath is a kiss. I swear by everything incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Edward, and thank you for traveling all the way here to read those poems. At this time, before we move forward, just want to invite anyone who feels inspired, maybe has one more poem to share, um, before we go forward and close in with our featured poet, Marlon. Is there anyone else who would like to come and take an opportunity to share a poem? More poems. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now, I'm going to introduce our featured poet. His name is Marlon Carey. He's a poet, published chapbooks, Giraffe Theory, 2000, Lazarus, 2007. Okay, Marlon, I'm going to say this, but you can correct me if the wording is... No, no, no. You have 2003, and that is Prolegomenon. Prolegomena. Prolegomena. See? Creatively, we can help each other <laughs> with words. <laughs> Maybe if it was Spanish, I probably would have said it better. <laughs> right. <laughs> so who has been a member of the Providence Poetry Slam, the Boston Poetry Slam, and Boston Lizard Lounge Poetry Slam teams? He is also a proud member of the Providence, Rhode Island-based poetry troupe, Brothers Keeper. Marlon is also an educator teaching poetry, hip hop, and the creative, art, the creative writings in the New England area and around the country. Actor, The Sunset Limited, Top Dog, Underdog, Othello. When Mahalia Sings, Take Me Out, A Few Good Men. Communicator, producer, and radio DJ on Off The Top, www.bsrlive.com. Yes, we will share all of his information. <laughs> that way you can go and look for it yourself. You might want to bring him over to bring the creativity arts along with Tasha J and all of our poets. We're here for you. Give us a call. You can find our information through the Cable Local Network in Brockton. So, and the entertainer released EPs. There is no plan B and plan M. The Unmixed Tape, End of the World Mixtape 2012, Occupy Your Mind. Kerry earned his BFA degree in creative writing at St. Andrews College in Lorenberg, North Carolina, and is proud to be a Rhode Island poet with enough respect to his Jamaican immigrant roots. Ari, you ready? Sure. Bring it on. <laughs> to have one sheet of paper on this particular podium. <laughs> Very slender ledge there. My fellow Americans. <laughs> Whenever I see multiple mics, I get that presidential mode on. Uh, one second. A hymn for Gaia resonates off the ornate roof. Meiosis in womb service. Philosaurus is not a dinosaur. Brockton blooms as we spring forward toward the cruelest month, bleeding poems, chickadees and squirrels, creativity. Sparks fly as knitting needles weave neighbors and dogs together with sunshine silver linings in a library. Stringed instruments sing and give wings to sentiment. Lights down and leading questions guide you into uncertainty, as certainly as the sunset slips below a hollow horizon, kisses are fuel and fuse as we cruise on concrete, out of winter's chaos and into springs, whatever. Wow. 
obviously I stitched together your words. I've been listening, trying to enjoy this one. I really am grateful to be here. I want to say thanks to Phil Asaurus, a friend I've known for a very long time. Um, Phil knows me when I had no white in the beard and no children. Uh, I have three beautiful children, uh, 11, six, and three years old, respectfully, and, and they are right now uh, being picked up from grandmas and daddies performing poetry at the library. Uh, my kids love art. They would love all the schools. So they love poetry. So I always want to bring them with me to work, but we're on television, so we're on a time clock. <laughs> thanks again, Phil, and thanks to the Brockman Public Library, and thanks for you guys for being here and all the poets who shared. I was born in Jamaica, a very small island. Now I'm growing up and I live in Rhode Island. Most of my adolescence was spent in the bean. So I throw up my threes, you know what I mean. I spent years in Brooklyn, went to school down south. Most every Sunday I'm at the Lizard Lounge. But right now I'm here and we putting it down. Won't you snap your fingers with me? I was born in Jamaica, a very small island. Now I'm growing up and I live in Rhode Island. Most of my adolescence was spent in the bean. So I like to wear green, you know what I mean? I spent years in Brooklyn, went to school down south. Most every Sunday I'm at the Lizard Lounge. But right now I'm here and we're putting it down. Won't you clap your hands? When I was just six years old, I had to wash dishes. Standing on a wooden box over an outdoor sink with a coconut brush in one hand and a bar of ivory soap in the other, I would scrub away with my little arms without the option of hot water. And my grandfather used to say, if he couldn't see his reflection, they weren't clean. So I would lean forward into the sink on tiptoes, trying to make sure that I wouldn't be awakened in the middle of the night by a belt. For I would then have to scrub them in the dark while he watched from the kitchen window telling me, stop crying for I give you something for crying for. That was a long time ago. But every now and again, as I stand at the sink in the kitchen, letting the warm water caress my hands, inhaling the fresh scent of my dish detergent slash lotion, I think of those days, and I remember coconut brushes and my grandfather's belt, and I lean forward into the sink. I remember, I remember, I remember Brooklyn Saturday morning cartoons relaxing on wine, the kung fu flicks is on, where's the remote who lost it, the one time I want to watch my show. And I remember shopping for the no frills and putting milk out on the windowsill. Man, we come so far, we can't go back no more, no more. Mayonnaise sandwiches, homemade bandages. Before he paid the bill, my father asked what the damage is. Mom was a friend of his, now she can't depend on him. He flew the coop, she can't recoup the loot she lent to him. Credit cards too. Trips to Jamaica to see his other lover. He was a clever faker, some people like to give. My father was a taker. He was a heartbreaker, lying old mark maker. Gave me emotional haymakers. Must be a daybreaker. Got married and still was a player. I was a hater. My half brother had the full family, mommy and a daddy. What about? I remember Brooklyn Saturday morning cartoons relaxing on wine. The kung fu flicks is on. Where's the remote? Who lost it? The one time I want to watch my show. And I remember shopping for the no frills and putting milk out on the windowsill. Man, we come so far, we can't go back no more, no more. On Saturdays, daddy came, I was always glad he came. Mama would be happy, we'd be telling jokes and playing games. I ain't really saying names, but daddy's really strange lately. He seems like he really hates me. Could it be that I trouble him? Look just like another him. Please God, don't let me do anything to make him run again. Life is fun again, mommy's just hunting again. It's been 11 years, when my daddy come again? But he's out there hustling, heavy in the streets. I'm feeling disrespected with the rejects on my feet. I'm keeping my cool, getting good grades in school. That fool ain't coming back. He must think that I'm a tool or a stool pigeon. He must think that this is easy living. One day I'ma pay him back, God willing. But until then I had to make a track to reminisce. Back in Brooklyn, chilling with my sis. Mama Maria's like a melody, playing the secret symphony. Jefferson Avenue, we're number 217, second floor, latchkey, single parent family. Get your sister home no more than 15 minutes after three. 
That's the way it has to be. Nobody got my back for me. Promising my son when you get on, you write a song for me. She used to comfort me when daddy wouldn't come for me. So that's the parent that I give my love to always constantly. She did it all for me and did it all with ease. Until she rest in peace, she could get the best for free. Because I remember Brooke Nome back in 88. I only got to ride my bike on block party days. So now I celebrate. I'm living kind of straight. I might not be a millionaire. I got a greater fate. I came to energize, elevate, motivate. Some people hate, but really, though, there was no debate. I'm a mama's boy. Daddy's leftovers. When he left, it didn't even look over his cold shoulder. You know how I know? Because I watched him go. I nearly froze with the window pressed against my nose. I'll mark my place on the surface of the rhythm and scratch out a blueprint for a new way of living. I'll mark my place on the surface of the rhythm and scratch out a blueprint for a new way of living. Dorchester is the place where bass reverberates with the space between silence and third base. We face our fates like firing squads, lose faith in our gods, empty plates, teas grumbling, bellies, fingers turn to trouble while fingers linger too close to trouble. We tussle with muscle and steel, peel caps like bananas as clips spit the sickness we can't express with our lips and we think this is air we are breathing, leaving holes in fabric, holes in families, vacant seats at dinner tables, spin fables out of casualties, reality is costumed in mind silent as they label the streets violent. But the streets are only the canvas where the bodies fall like brush strokes painting grim circumstances on Jericho's wall, graffiti like tsst. Newfound hieroglyphics, post-it notes, left on the side of the square, pyramids in the midst of madness. I try to master my mind, but I find I am more like a mind with a mimeograph machine mimicking magnificence from a distance. But what does a mirror reflect? If a mirror is merely reflecting, the reflection of what another mirror has been reflecting. But Dorchester is the place where a face sparks a memory. Features so familiar, I can't tell a friend or enemy, so I just... Let it be, knowing that for our type of pain, there can be no easy remedy. Though Chester is the place where hate cohabitates with tenderness. Nevertheless, children grow there with little or no one to look out for their welfare. They look out for welfare, checks in the mail while they fail. Standardized tests that aren't well fair. Same price to cut your hair or buy a CD so most cats be getting their hair braided while listening to some whack rap or brag about how they made it. But I get irritated by these acts of phony activism. Find most times that rap songs only lack of vision and these pretentious thugs will just keep on packing them and cats won't start attacking the system till the time Uncle Sam tries taxing the rhythm but Dorchester is a page with no place to write visions. So I just hold my position, stop, look, and listen, take Occam's raise to make the first incision, recite my poetry till I revive my revisions, ask God for the wisdom to complete my mission, and I receive the knowledge once I make my decision, I will mark my place on the surface of the rhythm, and scratch out a blueprint for a new way of living, I will mark my place on the surface of the rhythm, and scratch out a blueprint for a new way of living, will you mark your place on the surface of the rhythm, and scratch out a blueprint for a new way of living. I've got a feeling everything gonna be all right. Yeah, I've got a feeling everything gonna be all right. I've got a feeling. Everything gonna be alright, be alright, be alright, be alright. Sometimes it's like my whole lifeline's been the punchline of a joke that I didn't get. And the whole world's laughing, pointing, waiting for me to fail. But though I might pale in comparison to my environment, I've got ink inside my veins. And I will bleed until my time comes. I wait here until my time comes. I stroke my brain's frontal lobe until the rhymes come. And I will wait here until revolution comes like war drums to numb this pain. But my revolution will not begin and my chains remain. My chains remain like the concrete beneath the bloodstains. I've been trained to miss the freedom train. Train is trained for it. It's been mine from the beginning. And I'm beginning to understand as I stand here in welfare lines. Waiting for stale cheese and swine, I'm composing lines, trying to remind my brother who stays trapped behind vertical lines, proportion the imaginary line between legal and illegal. I'm trying to remind my people, hoping that as he reads my lines while getting his cornrows properly aligned or lining up for inspections, that most apparent citizens thought were behind blacks. He will find that as a matter of fact, the revolution is here.
Because that climb this blink and stare out of this well, I'm thinking hell must be a state of mind. The shortest distance between here and my destiny has always been a straight line, but I've been zigzagging all this time. Run amok, bamboozled within a Rubik's Cubism, television television saturated vision, missing the greater part of my intellect, any respect but never getting any. You see, I'm like that penny with the hole in it, but I put a string up in that hole and tie my soul in it and hold on to it, so here's the penny for your thoughts, but give me back my change. I'm trying to change all these straight lines and the curved ones that I keep on re-evolving like the earth around the sun and my suns will shine through all this darkness, even if I have to part with my soul in the pursuit. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Don't look at my wallet to show you my identity. There's no room to exist inside of a small black box and I forgot before I left the house this morning I had my blackness cocked and so I got shot felt lead in my back hot like the coals goose quickly run across. But boss, I swear we only threw three minutes in the fire. You idiots. Then why then I fought in there singing and shouting throwing their hands in the air like they just don't care about death. But breath is not the only weapon I have to get rid of, so I bleed ink in the fields, lying like cornrows, testifying to the silent screams, leaving stains in bold headlines on front pages. This revolution would not be covered by Dateline. This is me on the front line saying, one time, I'll drop no dimes in your crime watch hotlines. I'm pedal to the metal, revving like the red line, headed for the finish line. Trying to finish my lines in time as time tries to redefine the crimes history is done to me, and suddenly it comes to me like drums overcoming me, numbing me. Beating me over the head. I am not dead. My lifeline is the baseline behind the drums of my heartbeat. My lifeline is the baseline behind the drums of my heartbeat. How am I supposed to dream if I can't see the skyline? When I die, no obituary, just a byline. Air used to be free, now I have to buy my Greedy capitalist still working on the pipeline. How am I supposed to dream if I can't see the skyline? When I die, no obituary, just a byline. Air used to be free, now I have to buy my Greedy capitalist still working on the pipeline. Exxon Valdez on the spill tip. Deepwater horizon stuck the fisherman's battleship. BB prophets through the roof regardless. They praise the idiocracy, telling the truth tellers martyrs. Distorted facts and propaganda take again to over the border. It's all the sort of bloodshed and horror, like we're looking in a mirror, sort of chaos and anarchy. You're much safer here with me in this tape recorder, in this knife, in this rope. Let me take your order. The rich just drive past, burn the fuel up for fun. Unconcerned with climate change, more worried about protecting guns. We waste drinking water to make a movie about drowning, the agony of irony. Seven billion and counting, rising tides and shrinking mountains, diluted by two minutes, looming catastrophes amounting to apocalypse and doom. If we don't change soon, it's the end of the world as we know it. Stay tuned. How am I supposed to dream if I can't see the skyline? When I die, no obituary, just a byline. Air used to be free, now I have to buy my greedy capitalist still working on the pipeline. 10% of the world's water is ice. Water is life. Still, we sacrifice the greater good for a lower crude oil price. Obsessed with devices, Facebook and Skype, we're so distracted from the crisis. We've forgotten what life is. We sacrifice the future for immediate profits and clutter up our optics with investment prospects and stock tips. Indigenous populations affected by air and water that's toxic. They bear the most consequence but have the least power to stop it. And these corporate fat cats seem to have no thoughts of stopping it. MCs ain't trying to pick the people up. They worried about dropping hits. And this topic is one of universal renown. Forget about other inhabitable plants. The earth is our home. And apparently they won't stop till every last living plant animal person is gone. Is this thing on? <laughs> Try to do as little banter as possible. I banter a lot. Um, I like to talk about my life, what I've done, where I've been. Blah. Let's try to <laughs> bring it down uh, sometimes. Uh, I love performing. I've been doing it since I was very young. Um, you can tell I have a little bit of pastor in me. My, my uh, <laughs> grandfather is a Pentecostal pastor. So are my uncles. My mother was recently ordained. Could someone please pass me that water? I hate to bother anybody, but I'm dying. <sighs> Thank you very much. So uh, 
I come from a line of people who are communicators, people who get on the microphone and, and say soothing words and, and say words to activate people and bring them to, to do, you know, positive things. You know, I'm not coming from people who are telling people to go tear each other apart. You know, I come from a tradition of teachers and preachers. And so, in my work, I travel to different schools around uh, the New England area. I mean, wherever they'll hire us, we can travel out of state and out of the area too. But uh, the project so far is called Shakespeare to Hip Hop. My partner, Reggie Gibson, and I, we go to schools and we do a lot of these great workshops. I have a lot of fun with kids, man. I'm trying to engage them uh, with higher level literature, such as Shakespeare. So we have a, a play or, yeah, it's a literary performance uh, called the Shakespeare Time Traveling Speak Easy. And uh, one of the pieces is a condensed version of Hamlet, which is uh, Shakespeare's longest play. So I made it into two 16 bar rap verses with a hook. And the hook's very simple. I say, go ham, you say, go ham. Go ham, go, go Hamlet. Go ham, go Hamlet. Hamlet's father died, and it was most peculiar. Uncle Claudius became the new ruler. He married Gertrude, who was Hamlet's mama. Dude married his sister-in-law. Ain't that some drama? Hamlet's hating on it. Daddy's not even cold, but some guards on duty said they've seen the ghost. Ham goes to check it, and yup, it's his daddy. And what the ghost says starts to drive him batty. His pop says, Claudius ice me, no doubt. You know what to do, son. You gotta ride out. Subplot, Ophelia's bro said, Hamlet's just a flirt. She dies at the end. Oops, spoiler alert. But moving right along, here comes Fortune Brass, a young lad who came to get revenge for the past. A long time ago, somebody killed his big papa. He came thugged out to do the thing proper. Go ham! Go ham! Uh, go ham, let! Go ham! Go ham! Uh, go ham, let! Go ham, let! So Fortune Brass comes to he's like, Hamlet, let's fight! And was like, yo, I got a much bigger plight. I'm trying to get the mic to kill my uncle with a knife or poison him or push him off a cliff to end his life. Gertrude's higher than a kite, thinking everything's all right. While Hamlet's seeing visions, his plague with sleepless nights, but he still thinks the ghost might well be the devil. I'll stage a play to see if he's on the level. They reenact the murder. Claudius leaves the room. Now, Hamlet sure it's time to steal his uncle's doom. Hamlet goes ham like Jean-Claude Van Damme, Staff Polonius, Ophelia's dad. Like, aw, man. Laertes, the bro, comes back to get vengeance. Teams up with Claudius to end Ham's existence. Mom drinks the poison. Here's a toast to my son. Hamlet kills Claudius finally, then he dies. The play's done. Go, Ham! Go, Ham! Go, Hamlet! A go ham, go ham, go let. So as I mentioned, I have uh, three lovely children: Adelaide, Mabel, and Zion, and they're a lot of fun. And when Adelaide was uh, six years old, I wrote this story. Um, you know, in the midst of a lot of the things that are going on, I find that a lot of the poems that I wrote when I was younger, like young lady Tasha here, right? About, you know, identity, my blackness, finding pride in it, finding pride in my neighborhood despite it being crime ridden. Kids were dying left and right in the 90s in Boston, Dorchester, where I was growing up. Um, but I find a lot of these poems that I wrote for strength about the time when they talked about young black men's life expectancy being 21 years old are relevant now, and I'm 41 years old. And I find that very disturbing to exist in a world where I still have to, you know, I'm really glad these poems have some relevance, but really I'd rather they didn't, you know? I'm writing poems and reciting them. So anyway, back to my children. I try to write some, some light and some fun sometimes, and, and uh, one of the poems I wanted to share is this piece I wrote called Chocolate Nachos. <laughs> this is the story of the chocolate nachos, a snack I invented with my best friend Paco with some 
minor assistance from Rocco, Renee, and Flocko. Well, let me stop, though, so I can tell you a little bit of a lot so you can truly understand that sneaky, underhanded, no-good, dirty, rotten so-and-so named Rocco. See, Rocco is that bully from up the block, yo, who broke my yo-yo, ate my Oreos, and put rocks in my socks. He even broke my favorite CD by Tupac, that darn Rocco. He just comes over that day with little sister Renee and her scraggly old teddy bear named Flocko and sticks his grubby little sausage fingers right into the chocolate nachos and, well, it all started with me and Paco, who we were trying to find a distraction, a deviation from his stepmom's gazpacho, when we happened upon the aforementioned chocolate nachos. Now, we almost invented the chocolate taco, but we Googled it and found they already got those now. Paco swears it's all because he put in so many nachos, but I put in the most chocolate he must have forgot, though. You know Paco. He lies a lot, though. He says his mom won the lotto, and they won a the lot, so they're going to move away any day now. Anyway, anyhow, this is about the time when Rocco comes bursting in through our room locked door and where her teddy bear in tow comes his little sister Renee who cries a lot. No matter what you do to get her to stop. Hey Renee, how about some leftover party pretzels in the bowl of this delicious gazpacho? She started crying and running away from us as if we had the chicken pox or work for the Gestapo. She ended up in the living room where she slipped on a slimy sock so she tripped on the rug and swallowed a bug and swallowed her frock and that darn Rocco, that insufferable Rocco, pushes her over the line. He says, stop here crying. And all this time, Flocko. The bear is flying through the air and almost lands in the chocolate nachos, which would have been a catastrophe. Phew! Rocco leaps into the air, catches the bear, but knocks over the entire pot of gazpacho and spills a bag of mini marshmallows. But he saved the chocolate nachos, so we just cleaned the mess up and laughed so hard till we cried. And the tears in Renee's eyes just stopped, so we decided it was probably time to try these chocolate nachos. We approached it like new chocolate apostles. It was the true snack gospel. We each took a bite and instantly felt colossal. Chocolate nachos made even the impossible Rocco act less hostile. He slid over ever so slyly to me and Paco and asked, was it possible for he, Renee, and Flacco to have chocolate nachos to go? And we said, heck no. But before we had a chance to see the time on the clock, yo, Rocco snatches the entire bowl and runs out the front door. And I would like to tell you more about the story of the chocolate nachos. But for now... That's all I got, yo. <laughs> I might do two more, right? Is that fine? Okay. <laughs> I love this. This is a lot of fun uh, just sharing words. I've been in love with words since I was very young. Uh, you know, I grew up in a time where we didn't have tablets. You know, we didn't have 24-7 information available to us. Cartoons were on at 9 o'clock, and they were over by the time it was time to go outside. So we had a little time on Saturdays to catch it, you know, after school, to catch it. Very narrow windows. My son is like, Dad, you know, can YouTube right now? And he goes, son. And I just do something else with them because I want to engage them. But every now and then I let them watch it. But I grew up in an environment where we didn't have a lot of that stuff, so I spent time in my room. I didn't, you know have a lot of time outside because my neighborhoods I grew up in wasn't always the very safest, you know, so I couldn't get my basketball game all right. I mean, I got a nice shot, but I really had no handle because I didn't get a chance to practice. Uh, but I spent time in the house reading. I have a lot of books that are my favorite, favorite books when I was young, so I just, I keep trying to get that idea of reading across. If you have young children in your life, buy them books, you know, everybody else will get them on the digital. Be the person that gets them the book and read to them. Um, very important stuff. I work with a lot of different young people in, that's the key. All right, enough of the message. Uh, yeah, two more, right? Okay. Having a lot of fun. <laughs> I had this poem I wanted to do, and I'm scared I get it wrong on camera. Ha. <laughs> I was gonna open with it, there's gonna be like this big thing. And, oh. All right, we'll try it. All right, this piece is called Methodology. Um, Obviously, I like to play with words. Obviously, I like to play with rhyme. I, I really have a lot of fun with this. Maybe I have too much time to myself. But this is methodology. Whew. Do not think about poetry. Be poetry. Walk with a million angels cushioning your arches. Talk with a billion diminutive parcels of artscapes precariously perched in a spectacular palace's archway. You are practically drowning in society. Slip away. 
Come fly with me. Scrape the barnacles off your irises, exercise your larynx, and recite this deliciously inspired phrase. I rise with pride uncompromised from the fires. I rise with pride uncompromised from the fires. And the irony of all my exasperated efforts is after all this time, for all this endless, exasperating effort, I haven't even perspired. I'm an admirer of chaos. You could say I have a crush on her. Yet I haven't even developed the hide thick enough to cushion her. A suitable sheath to shield me while I am leaping to the arms of a time bomb to shield a customer. Or concealing the golden one betwixt the hay bales and lumber. I am wielding gossamer strands and sowing sorrow and surrender slippery threads in the surreptitious, syrupy, satin streams of symmetry. This is just chemistry. I could have been a plumber or perhaps practice dentistry, but this is apparently my predetermined destiny. If we all just face it, we could say it's a kind of ministry. So if you're closely listening to me, I should proceed with the sermon most expediently. I'm unconditionally conditioning your conditioning's conditioning, eradicating all your previous prejudices, superstitions, and suppositions, reviewing and investigating all impractical positions and replacing them with statements of unmistakable divinity and tenacious precision. But this is poetry. Masquerading as wisdom. It is a pregnant pause. Injected with diction. It's an election day dinner without all the fixings. It's a prescription for the remixing of the syphilitic system. A swan song for the sin sick sinners in the slop they've slipped in. A clever inscription written for all the innocent victims of carcinogen sifting September's ashes to find an inkling of truth suspended inside a minuscule molecule of crystallized carbon. This is all that remains of our last great bonfire. Do not think too long about it. Just tell them how we burned. All right, so uh, I'm going to end right here. I'm going to try to end on a good uh, motivational note. I have this piece to do. Um, maybe this will help to boost the views on the video. I have a video that I was very blessed to have the opportunity to perform at the TEDx conference in Boston uh, a few years back. And I did this piece called Time. And I do it while solving a Rubik's Cube. And it's, it's pretty cool to watch. But I think a lot of times people miss the poem. Like, yo, the thing you did, the poem and the cube. Uh, I really appreciate the, the, the performance dynamics and, and that sort of thing. But I like the piece too. I thought I would share it with you on the way out. Is that okay? It's been a wonderful time with you. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. It seems like I'm always wasting time. Buying time. Spending time on trying to borrow some time, but these days, time is money. I heard somebody say that money is time. Now, money doesn't grow on trees, but it is the root of all evil. People who have a lot of money seem to have all the time in the world, don't they? But money isn't everything. Time is of the essence. And essentially, in order to get more time, i got to have lots of money. But in order to get more money, I have to spend time. So time is the most valuable currency. I would like to share time, but I have no spare time. Not even enough time to make change or change the world or change my mind. Time is running out. There's never enough time. Getting a college degree takes... A lot of time costs a lot of money, so kids do crimes and end up locked up, serving time for stealing money, doing hard time, costing us the same amount of money it will cost to give them a college degree. But outside the prison gates, hunger eats away at the walls of a child's stomach. Daddy worked overtime this week, but the company accountant took some well-deserved time off to get in some tea time and time with the kids. You'll get your check in due time. Meanwhile, I'm standing in the lunch line trying to find a moment to write a rhyme, and I find I had no time for writing lines. I'm sneaking off to the men's room to steal a few minutes of my boss's time, realizing I'll probably never have enough time because when I signed the dotted line, I signed away all my free Time! So now my time exists before 9 and after 5. And some nights I was there to way past 9. So I never had time to spend with my friends. And though I was chasing the Benjamins, somehow I never had any ends to spend. And we finally did carve out a few minutes from our busy days. And then we would simply coalesce around a common thread and coexist inside the haze, whiling away the minutes, discussing the disgusting parts of our dismal existences, punching in, punching out, serving time. 
Prisoners trapped inside the hourglass, choking on the sandstorm of possibilities, wishing we could all go back in time and remind ourselves to take the time to appreciate the gift of time. And right now, after all the timeouts, the time on stage, the studio time, the time and time again, bad time and the absent-minded time spent wondering, will I get my big break this time? I should just throw in the towel and resign and get back on my grind, talk it all up to waste the time, try to make up for lost time. Just yesterday, y'all, I looked up in the sky and I saw a sign. It was a blimp proclaiming the world is mine. And I thought, well, it's about time. Thank you guys. That's my time. All righty. Thank you, Marlon. That was awesome. Definitely with the, it went through like a wave of various colors, various emotions, and a great way to inspire me to know where I want to graduate and be. <laughs> and when I, with that being said, I, I'm going to close myself out and then I'm going to pass it forward to Philip. With every form of poetry shared here today, definitely creative definitely unique and definitely suited for each poet themselves and their individuality. Creativity comes from various entities. As Marlon, Brother Marlon, I say that because I'm also a faith believer. And um, I'm a faith believer, but yet I don't allow the, um, some standards or perceptions to limit me to where how far creativity can take us when we diversified ourselves and come together in a form of expression, but yet we're speaking loud volumes, yet we're sharing words and speaking of our personal experiences. For those who can't relate, they can hear us and share theirs, and then we can begin to relate together. So with that being said, Philip is going to share about some of the upcoming events, and I look forward to next week's with the Expressive Healing, because when we are poets, we're continuously involving. We're continuously seeking to grow and find another part of us to begin to pull out and express. One day I may express not as Marlin or maybe beyond, but I have some umph in me that I would like to convert myself to express, like Tasha, Nancy, Craig, you know, um, because it's important to get all of ourselves filtered out so that we can open ourselves to be open for others. And we can transcend and share that because that too can op have others open up. So your eyes, my eyes, watch. Fly around soaring eagles, north, south, east, and west. I'm going to pass this over to Philip. And before that, we expanded ourselves, sorry, Philip, to bring the creative arts in Brockton to, in a different way where people usually don't blend together. So Philip has joined in, Inez from Latin Women's Association, as well as business owners. So when you think about a business owner, when you think about um, ourselves as average local residents, when you think about organizations, when you think about religion, and when you think about people, some places you don't find certain communities of people diversified and blended together because everybody's separated to their own entities. So what we decided is that now we're going to have an upcoming opening to bring the creative arts, poetry, paintings, et cetera, forward on a whole nother level in the city of bringing business owners and saying, you know what, welcome us, we welcome you. And together we can be Greek, Latino, Jamaican, Scottish, British, you know, we can be all come together. And when we blend, we go behind a jambalaya, a jambalaya pot. And that's what we're bringing forward. So now I am passing it over to Philip because there's some great upcoming things that he would like to share with us. And I thank everyone graciously because this is just beautiful. I, I really, I really love this. And I look forward to the next month and the next day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, Allie. So um, next month, April 20th, we will have Rick McIntyre as our feature. And um, he's an exceptional poet, um, Brockton, um, the Boston Cantab and the Providence uh, Slam teams. And um, so I want to thank our director of the Brockton Public Library, Mr. Paul Engel. I want to thank Mark Lindy, Brockton Cable Access. I want to thank 
everybody that came up on the open mic. Our features, Tasha and Marlon. Most importantly, I want to thank the people who came to listen. This is Brockton. We are the champions, right? Brockton City of Champions. That's, <laughs> we will be the lighthouse of the South Shore. Okay, we will be the shade tree that everybody's gonna come and listen to the words and view these beautiful, this beautiful artwork. So we have to keep it going and going and with the help of our amazing host, Alexandra, she's just, the fireworks you see on the 4th of July, pale compared to Alex. So thanks again. We will see you next month, April 20th. Thank you. Very quickly, I, um, I wanted to say that the opening and, um, is at the spot. And it's an evening time for the creative arts as us nonprofits like the Latin Women's Association is able to bring forth. We're looking for poets, artists to come and to share your words. And this is all for the community to look into engage with the community because the cable, Mark, where Mark comes from, is word seven. It's right in the north side of Brockton. And we have the main spring house in my affiliated church, Keys of the Kingdom, uh, Tabernacle Prayer across the street. But it's an area where I feel is neglected where we see homeless people, where we see people struggling visibly, but yet for some reason it's, we're all blinded by it. So we are now bringing our creative venues that we have going on here is gonna continue, but we're bringing it to the north side of Brockton. So our opening night will be March 31st from six to 10, and we invite everyone to come share your words and poetry as well, so that we can build our community together. Now I'm done, thank you.